Sex Pistols. A London-based punk band, the Sex Pistols were originally formed in 1972 by founding member Steve Jones on the guitar and Paul Cook on drums, who were originally aiming to be a rock and roll band. Jones and Cook then started hanging out at a local sex shop simply called Sex, where they met their future manager, or as they call their Miss Manager, Malcolm McLaren. A few years later, in 1975, Glenn Matlock, who was working at the shop, overheard the band saying that they were in need of a bassist and suggested he join them. He was accepted right then and there. Now, with the only thing needed being a singer, McLaren had heard about a guy named John, who had a very rocker look to him and was a frequent visitor to the shop. He found John Lydon, who was wearing a self-made I Hate Pink Floyd t-shirt with bright green hair, and after negotiating, eventually persuaded him to audition to be the lead singer. The song he auditioned with was 18 by Alice Cooper, in which Lydon mined the song until they made him sing. He was accepted, and afterwards McLaren found out that the John he picked was not the John he had heard about, but figured it was too late to turn back now. The band then started rehearsing new material with Leiden providing lyrics, and on October 8, 1976, the band signed with the label EMI for £40,000. And about just one month later, Anarchy in the UK was released on November 26, 1976. The press went insane over the title, the lyrics, and just the overall band in general, which to their advantage made them more well-known. A few days later, on December 1st, 1976, after the band Queen cancelled their appearance on short notice, EMI booked the Pistols to appear on the Today Show hosted by Bill Grundy, which unbeknownst to the band was being broadcast live throughout London. In the interview, as Grundy questioned the validity of the band's music, seeing if it was a joke, he asked about Beethoven, Mozart, and Bach, in which Leiden sarcastically responded, They're what are we saying, wonderful sir? people. Are they? Oh, yes, they really turn us on. Grundy then replied, Suppose they turn other people on. And to that, Leiden said, That's just their tough trick. It had been the first time someone swore on live television. And after the conversation switched topics, Grundy encouraged Steve Jones to swear even more after Jones called him a dirty old man. Check out the video for the full interview. During the next couple of months, John Lydon and Glenn Matlock were constantly arguing and eventually ended off with Matlock leaving the band through mutual consent in February of 1977, with Malcolm McLaren claiming that he was kicked out because he quote-unquote liked the Beatles. Now with no bassist and since Jones and Cook were so close, Lydon wanted to bring someone he felt close to into the band. That someone was John Simon Ritchie, aka Sid Vicious, who was a major fan of the band. Luckily, he looked the part, with the only thing being he could not play bass. They eventually taught him all the songs, and on March 10, 1977, for 75,000 pounds, A&M Records became the Pistols' new label, and their next single was God Save the Queen, which was John Lydon's alternative national anthem. Only 10 days after they signed to A&M, the Pistols were dropped from the label for bad behavior due to a drunken Sex Pistols celebration of their new and now old record label. With the band wanting to keep the ball rolling, they reluctantly signed to Richard Branson's Virgin Records in May of 1977. With the upcoming Queen's 25th Silver Jubilee, McLaren thought it would be great publicity to get the band to perform on a boat next to the event. The band didn't want to do it, but were strong-armed by McLaren's threat to end the tour. They played until they were taken off the boat by local police. Now with almost the entire nation despising them, the God Save the Queen single was re-released by Virgin on a bigger scale and sparked outrage across the country through its controversial lyrics and album cover, featuring a defaced picture of the Queen. BBC refused to play it, and even though it outsold the number one song I Don't Want to Talk About It by Rod Stewart, the BBC refused to let it hit number one and kept it at the number two slot for weeks. Government members of Parliament even called for the band to be hung at London's Traders Gate. They then went on to release other singles such as Pretty Vacant and Holidays in the Sun, July 2nd and October 15th, and on October 28th, 1977, saw the release of their one and only album, Never Mind the Bollocks, Here's the Sex Pistols. Pre-release orders were so high, it immediately charted at number one. Upon the album's release, more controversy surrounded the band when they were charged with the obscure, indecent advertising act of 1889, because of the word bollocks being a slang term for testicles. However, the band's lawyer proved that the word actually derived from a nickname for clergymen, and the case was eventually dropped. With the end of the year on its way and an American tour coming up. The Pistols volunteered to play two shows for families of striking firemen, a manatee show for the kids, and an evening show for the adults in Huddersfield, England on Christmas Day 1977. The band gave out presents and ended it off getting into a food fight with the kids. Then in January of 1978, a U.S. tour was arranged. Initially, the band were refused entry to the States due to their criminal records. However, their visa problems were eventually solved with the band only having to pull two shows from the tour. Instead of playing major American cities, they decided to play a short series of dates in the deep south of the country throughout Memphis, Atlanta, and Dallas. During the tour, the band was getting out of hand. With the pressure of touring along with the mixture of in-band fighting, Sid's increasing drug problem, and manager McLaren's unwillingness to deal with the band's personal needs, it somewhat marked the beginning of the end of the Sex Pistols. They played their final show at San Francisco's Winterland Ballroom on January 14th, 1978, with the final words spoken by John Lydon were, If I get the feeling you've been cheated, good night. John Lydon eventually walked out on the others the following day after trying to get Jones to dump McLaren as their manager. The Sex Pistols were officially no more.
Though the Sex Pistols were a very short-lived band with only one album under their belt and only being together for two and a half years, they are now considered to be the grandfathers of the punk genre, style, and culture. They were inducted in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in 2006 but refused to attend the ceremony or to accept the award, with Leiden sending a letter saying, next to the Sex Pistols, rock and roll in that Hall of Fame is a piss stain. Sid Vicious was later charged with the murder of his girlfriend Nancy Spungen on October 12, 1978 and later died from a heroin overdose upon his temporary release on February 2, 1979. John Lydon started the band Public Image Limited, a.k.a. Pill, who still makes music to this day, while Paul Cook and Steve Jones do side projects. Keep on rockin'. If you like this video, why not give it a thumbs up? Leave a comment down below for more bands you'd want me to cover, and subscribe for more videos every week.